Great shot, Tom. That should do it for you. Thank you. What are you going to do with all those winnings? Well, my broker is E.F. Hutton, and uh, E.F. Hutton says... When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. I bet you can't forget this classic commercial. E.F. Hutton may no longer be talking, but many financial thought leaders are. Who are they? How much influence do they have? And should you be listening to them? It's that time again, time to tune out the hype and focus on the facts. Facts that matter to you, the income generation. Let's get started. Get ready to separate reality from myth. With us, David Scranton. David Scranton. David Scranton. David Scranton. But David Scranton says, hey, not so fast. How does it affect the market? How does it affect the economy? Thanks to efficiencies in new technology and a staff of veteran analysts and portfolio managers, Sound Income Strategies strives to set new standards and bring institutional style investing to your portfolio. I'm David Scranton. You know, if that old E.F. Hutton commercial we just showed seems quaint by now, it's probably because it harkens back to a time when saving and investing for retirement was simpler. At least it seemed simpler in part because investors weren't nearly as inundated as they are today with confusing and conflicting advice about how to do it. People listened when E.F. Hutton talked because in the days before cable TV and the internet, there weren't a thousand other financial thought leaders all talking at the same time. In the midst of so much noise, who are the real financial thought leaders and influencers today? And how much influence do they wield where the financial markets are concerned? And who among them should investors in or nearing retirement pay attention to when planning for your own financial future? We'll examine those questions and more right here on today's show. We'll also break down the different tiers of thought leaders and discuss how they influence everyday investors as well as the markets. Joining us will be best-selling author and mortgage and investing specialist, Chris Hogan. Along with Matthew Johnson, owner of Johnson Wealth and Income Management, a retirement income store located in Humboldt, Iowa. But first, let's talk about just what we mean by a financial thought leader, and let's look briefly at the top tier group. Today's topic is a convenient one for our show, since we have some of the nation's top financial thought leaders right here on the income generation week after week. People like Steve Forbes, Art Laffer, Robert Schiller, thought leaders whose words and insights not only influence investors, but sometimes can influence the markets themselves. Now, of course, no financial thought leader has more influence over the markets than the chairman of the Federal Reserve, a post currently held by Trump appointee. Jerome Powell. That's because the Fed chair not only offers a periodic assessment of the economy and financial markets, but they also have the power to set policies and to take actions that can have major impacts on things like consumer and investor confidence. So what's important to understand, though, about thought leaders like Federal Reserve chairman and others in that very top tier is that their words and actions are often influenced by politics. We've seen examples of this throughout the Trump presidency and the way the Fed has responded, or in some cases not responded, to periodic criticism. President Trump was particularly critical of the Fed's decisions to continue raising short-term interest rates all the way through 2018 as the stock market struggled and the economy actually showed signs of slowing. Now, while most economists attributed those things to the expanding U.S.-China trade war, the president argued that the Fed was largely to blame. And by early 2019, Chairman Powell finally announced that he was putting the brakes on more rate hikes. By mid-2019, of course, the Fed actually began lowering interest rates again in response to an inverted yield curve, which, as we talk about all the time on this show, is a classic recessionary warning sign that occurs when long-term rates fall below short-term rates. Now, while that move was obviously based more on economic fundamentals than it was on politics, one could argue that's not the case with some of the chairman's recent assessments of the economy. In fact, as recently as October, he proclaimed that while the U.S. economy was facing some risks, it was, quote, in a good place. Now, sure, that's nice to hear from the country's number one financial thought leader, yet some of the Fed's actions since early 2019 actually seem to run counter to the level of confidence its chairman has expressed. 
And as I've explained uh, previously on the show, the Fed is once again engaged in more quantitative easing, buying up $60 billion in U.S. Treasuries per month through the second quarter of this year to manipulate the short end of the yield curve. So why is the Fed engaged in more artificial stimulus if the economy is truly in such a good place? And also, why has it been forced to lower short-term rates in response to a bond market in which long-term rates have stalled at a range of one and a half to two? Again, I believe part of the answer is politics. The stock market's been riding high since late October, in part because a deal to settle the trade war moved forward, but also because the Fed has signaled that it's willing to do almost anything in its power to keep Wall Street happy. From reversing its course on interest rates to actually uh, introducing more artificial stimulus. That will also make President Trump happy, of course, as he campaigns for re-election. In fact, as recently as February 22nd of last year, the president claimed the Dow would likely be 10,000 points higher and the GDP would be close to 4% if the Fed hadn't continued raising rates in 2018. The words and actions of top-tier thought leaders like Jerome Powell can sometimes seem contradictory because they're in a position where politics is a necessary part of the game. Now, that doesn't always mean governmental politics. Sometimes it means having to balance different loyalties and objectives. The same is true of most other top-tier financial thought leaders and influencers, such as Warren Buffett, for example, who's involved with major corporations that trade in the stock market. And as I've discussed before, the number one fiduciary responsibility of every Wall Street CEO is to maximize shareholder value. Therefore, they have an obligation, if you think about it, to speak as optimistically as possible about the stock market as often as they can. Therefore, their thoughts and insights may also be tinged with political influence, which is important for everyday investors to understand. Coming up, we'll talk about some of the noteworthy second-tier financial thought leaders who frequently join us right here on The Income Generation. Did you know that the Retirement Income Store publishes its own newsletter? Each month, we share helpful information, research reports, and other resources to help you navigate the complexities of planning and saving for retirement. And for a limited time, we're offering a three-month trial subscription to the Retirement Income Store newsletter. Visit theretirementincomestore.com to learn more. Right now, it's time to welcome our first guest, Chris Hogan. He's a best-selling author and a mortgage and investing specialist. Chris, thanks for joining us once again right here on The Income Generation. Well, thank you. It's a, it is an honor to be back with you. So I know I consider you to be, and many others consider you to be, a financial thought leader. So tell us, how did that come about? Well, I think when you've lived enough and made enough mistakes, you begin to kind of learn the right way and the wrong way about going about things. And I'm naturally a coach at heart, so I want to teach people to avoid some of the mistakes that I've made so they can make progress faster than me. So the desire behind my my process as a, a being a thought leader is to educate and give people empowerment. So when you look at other thought leaders that are out there today, uh, many of those that you hear on the radio or you see on television, um, what do you wish they would do differently? You know, what do you think they should be doing more of or maybe they should just start doing? Well, I think anytime as a as a person who's trying to help people as an educator, and that's how I see myself, I, I always want to look at things through the lens of the individual. What is the everyday American seeing out there? What are they feeling? And so when I try to give information, I'm trying to make sure that I not only give the information, but I give it in a way that's providing them clarity on what to do and absolute certainty on what to avoid, but at the same time, giving them some hope on what they can do for themselves. So do you feel like some of the thought leaders that are out there today, uh, perhaps are they complicate things too much? Do you think maybe they talk over people's heads? And, and, and if so, you know, what do you think they should be doing alternatively? And, 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 and how do you see yourself as being different? Well, I definitely think there are always people out there that love to use uh, what I call $20 words uh, to try to explain things. And I think anytime if you're trying to talk to the everyday man and woman, you need to give them the information in a way that they can comprehend it. Uh, and it's not necessarily about intellectual level, it's about understanding. And so I wouldn't say all are doing that, but you have some. And I think the most important thing is, are people coming away with more information? Are they understanding things a little bit better? 
Uh, and I think that's one of the things I always strive to do is to make sure people come away understanding these things and understanding what to do for themselves next. Know your audience. Got it. Speak to your audience. Now, your most recent book, Everyday Millionaires, How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth and How You Can Too. One minute or so, what can our viewers learn from reading your book? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, you're going to learn that, hey, there are a lot of myths and information out there about millionaires is just not true. Uh, there's information about wealth out there that's not a reality that says that in order for you to have wealth, you have to come from a family that has it to inherit. And that's just not true. Or that you have to go to a private fancy school to be able to get a good paying job to become a millionaire. That's not true. And so the reality is, is that we all have the ability inside of us to work a plan and a process to be able to build wealth over time. Okay. So, so do you think, you know, 15 seconds or so, I mean, you think your average person who never makes $100,000 a year can build wealth and become a millionaire? I absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt that they can. What they need is a plan and awareness and to believe that they can do it. That's right. And starting early helps, too. The earlier you start, the better, obviously. Chris, stay That's with right. us, please. We need to take a quick, quick commercial break. We'll be back in a moment. And you stay with us, too. We'll be back here with more coming up on The Income Generation. J. Scranton's groundbreaking new book, The Retirement Income Story, will revolutionize the way baby boomers and their advisors plan and save for retirement. The Retirement Income Story, the story behind the launch of the Retirement Income Store, is about to shatter many of the myths Wall Street bankers have promoted and protected for decades. David outlines what he believes to be a much better method for planning and saving for retirement, one that doesn't involve taking on more stock market risk. In fact, most will be able to reduce and or possibly even eliminate stock market risk while creating renewable streams of income they can count on well into their retirement years. The simple truth is that if you were born in 1968 or sooner, you can't afford to write out another catastrophic stock market drop like the ones in 2000 and 2007. Read the Retirement Income Story and revolutionize the way you plan and save for retirement. Financial experts have predicted that the next major recession could happen as early as this year. What would you do if it took half of your retirement savings with it? I'm David Scranton, founder of Sound Income Strategies, and there is a safer way, investing for income. By focusing primarily on non-stock market income generating investments, you could significantly reduce the impacts of the next major recession. Visit the Retirement Income Store at soundincomestrategies.com to connect with an income specialist who can help you get started to an income-based retirement plan. For behind-the-scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow The Income Generation Show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes. Keep in mind that as we categorize various financial thought leaders on today's show, that the terms second and third tier in no way indicate a lower or lesser status. The terms are simply used as a way to illustrate the progression from thought leaders whose influence is very broad and expansive to those more likely to have a direct impact on your own decision making and your own personal finances. Some actually operate on multiple tiers. They're not only thought leaders, but also boots on the ground financial advisors who work directly with clients. And if you're a regular viewer, you've met many of those thought leaders right here on our show. You've also met some of the country's most esteemed financial thought leaders from the fields of academia, journalism, and business. So let's talk about a few of those thought leaders and what makes them so respected and influential within this group. One of our favorite and most frequent guests is Steve Forbes, whose name is likely familiar with many people with little, little or no interest in finance. That's because the Forbes name has been synonymous with excellence in financial journalism and analysis for over 100 years. Steve is the son of Malcolm Forbes and the grandson of Forbes magazine founder B.C. Forbes. Today, 
He is editor-in-chief of Forbes Media and one of the nation's leading authorities on business, the economy, and the financial markets. He is also the author of several books, such as Reviving America, How Repealing Obamacare, Replacing the Tax Code, and Reforming the Fed Will Restore Hope and Prosperity. As a one-time presidential candidate, Steve has a unique understanding of the delicate relationship between politics and finance, and we're always grateful to have him right here on the show to share his knowledge with you. We're also always happy to welcome Mohammed Olarian, another important financial thought leader who's joined us several times. Mohammed is Chief Economic Advisor at Allianz, an international financial services provider. He's also a columnist for Bloomberg View and a contributing editor of the Financial Times. Mohammed served as chair of the Global Development Council under President Obama, and he was named one of foreign policy's top global thinkers four years in a row. He is also the author of two New York Times bestsellers, When Markets Collide and The Only Game in Town, Central Banks, Instability, and Avoiding the Next Collapse. Now, naturally, you can follow these and other thought leaders online. Mohammed Alarian has a website under his name, and Steve Forbes' columns and articles can be found at Forbes.com. You can also follow both of them on Twitter. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you know that another financial thought leader we always enjoy having on the show is John Nigerian. John was a professional football player before building his career in finance. With his brother Pete, he has founded several companies such as Investitude.com and MarketRebellion.com. And is an options trader and market analyst. He's also authored or co-authored four books on trading as well as the markets, including a book entitled Follow the Smart Money. You can follow John on Twitter or at marketrebellion.com. Other thought leaders we've been proud to have on our show multiple times include Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Schiller, columnist, commentator, and economics professor Peter Morisi, tax specialist and inventor of the Laffer Curve, Art Laffer, economist and financial commentator, Peter Schiff, and personal finance self-help celebrity, Larry Wingett. If you follow any of these thought leaders on your own, you'll know that their outlooks and their analyses often vary greatly. And that's a good thing. It's important to hear different perspectives in order to get a deeper understanding of the economy and a deeper understanding of the financial markets and the many forces that affect them. That way, you're actually better prepared to work with your own advisor to create a financial strategy that's just right for you and just right for your personal situation. Coming up, we'll talk about some of those popular financial thought leaders on the third tier of influence, meaning those in the popular media who focus more directly on providing investment advice to you. After a certain age, you shouldn't be overexposed to stock market risk. Yet, you might still be trying to squeeze every last drop out of today's market. And although fixed income investment can offer less risk than stocks, it doesn't mean you have to sacrifice return. In fact, recently some fixed income investments have actually outperformed stocks. But yet, you're still waiting to act. Visit the retirementincomestore.com today to regain control of your retirement. Now it's time to welcome back Chris Hogan best-selling author and mortgage and investing specialist. Chris, thanks so much for sticking around. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. So you always say that preparing for retirement is really a marathon, not a sprint. How so? Well, you know, I think about it. I ran track when I was in high school and ran the 100 and the 200-yard dash. And you would do this training to be able to run these short bursts Right, But then for the other friends of mine that were distance runners, they would run laps after laps after laps as they ran the 3200 and all these long races. And I just remembered, wow, people are thinking about retirement as the short burst. And in reality, it's more like that long marathon where I wanna make sure I'm doing the things that I need over time, but I have to continue to do those things, not just do them every once in a while. So in that mentality, it is this mindset that you have to have about what am I gonna do over the long haul? So what happens, you know, we talked about how oh, anybody could become a millionaire and never have to make $100,000 a year of income if they start early and they have a plan and they save. So what if somebody's watching our show right now and they're between 40 and 50, let's say, and they really haven't saved anything. Maybe they've worked hard to put children through college and now they're kind of wiping their brow and trying to get started. What's your best advice for those folks? Well, I think they, they have to take a deep breath and be real about where they are and really understand their income, understand kind of their expenses right now, 
and their goals. And I think it's not a matter of looking back and beating themselves up about what they didn't do in their 20s or 30s. It's more the realization of what are we going to do right now to not allow any more time to be wasted and beginning to develop that plan. What are your dreams? Now, what are the tools that you have in front of you? And then who do you need to add to your team from a professional standpoint to help you get there? So, Chris, obviously, the, the later that you start really saving for retirement, the more radical the moves are that you might have to make to try to make up for time. Give our viewers, if you will, some examples of more radical moves that you might have to make if you're finally getting focused on this in your later years. David, you're absolutely right. If it's later on that you're now getting in tune and understanding, hey, I'm behind the eight ball, you're going to have to do some serious things. Some of those moves might look at be downgrading your lifestyle, uh, selling your home uh, and going and renting or buying a smaller home. Uh, it might look like taking on two to three extra jobs, depending on your situation, to bring on extra income to either attack debt or be able to invest. But I, I would still say to those people, even if it's later in life, uh, you can look back and realize, I wish I would have done it sooner, but I don't want you to beat yourself up. The worst thing we could do right now is waste any more time. So we've got to maximize the time. And the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So it's time for some changes, but I want you to do it with the right attitude and the belief that you're going to help yourself. That's right. Something has to change. Definition of insanity. Yes. I love it. Hey, switching gears for a little bit. Chris, tell our viewers, what, what's your thought, what are your thoughts right now about the financial markets, about the economy in general? Well, I think, you know, if we look and we're being honest with ourselves and we say, you know what, things are looking very good. I mean, we've got gains and growth. We've got the lowest unemployment we've ever had. The opportunities are out there. And so I have this long range view, David, just like you with investing. Uh, and I think a lot of people tend to look at a microcosm and the short view uh, of what's going on. And I'm a realist. You know, I know things are never as good as they seem or as bad as they seem, but in, rea in the middle, reality falls. And so I know if I stay in control of myself, I know my plan is working and it's going to continue to work. So final question, tell our viewers, if you will, in the next uh, 40 seconds or so, uh, what do you think would be a, a helpful goal or a helpful way to look at the markets in, through 2020 in terms of their personal sa finances, specifically saving for retirement? Well, I can tell you this. I think two, two, you know, 2020 is definitely going to bring some change. Um, I think we will start to see the continued ebbs and flows of the market. Uh, as we get closer to the election, there will all automatically be a response to that uh, into the fourth quarter and into the first quarter of 2021. But at the same time, understanding your plan. Okay. So stick with the plan. Don't deviate uh, just because markets go up and markets go down, which is – very good advice, as usual. Chris, thanks so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, David. Now, you stay with us. We have more coming right here on The Income Generation, coming up in just a moment. doesn't love to be entertained, right? It's human nature to pay attention to a little razzle-dazzle, a little comedy, or a little song and dance. So, so much so that even TV shows, primarily meant to be informative or educational, sometimes also strive to be entertaining. And you know, that's fine. Until, of course, the goal of education becomes secondary to the goal of entertaining. It's something everyday investors should keep in mind when following some of the thought leaders on the third tier of influence the tier most likely to inform and impact the financial decisions of many Americans. And let's face it, the majority of everyday investors are much more likely to know what these thought leaders are thinking than they are to listen to a speech by the Federal Reserve Chairman or to read the latest book by Mohamed Olarian. If they do know what's on the minds of middle and top tier thought leaders, it's because third tier leaders like these are quoting them or interviewing them on their shows. And you know, that's also fine. It's the job of every thought leader to inform and to educate, not just to share opinions or give advice or, as mentioned, to entertain. Here's the bottom line, though. 
these third tier thought leaders are the ones most likely to have some direct influence over the financial decisions of you. So it's important to consider their advice carefully and to keep it in proper context. Most importantly, for most people, major financial decisions should always be made with the help and guidance of a trusted financial advisor, one who knows your personal situation, your retirement goals and income needs, who may actually be a thought leader in his or her own right. So who are some of the major players on this third tier of financial thought leadership? Well, many are so popular that they don't need me to even answer that question, but I will anyway. Naturally, when most people think of entertaining, high energy investment advice, they think of Jim Cramer, whose Mad Money show has been on CNBC since 2005. A former stockbroker and hedge fund founder, Cramer states the goal of his show is simply to empower people to become better investors. Like many thought leaders on this tier, he focuses primarily on identifying which stocks to pick or which stocks to avoid. Another influential figure on this tier is Dave Ramsey, who first entered the media scene with a call-in radio show. His Dave Ramsey show then ran as a TV show on Fox through the year 2010, and today it airs on YouTube. On this show, Ramsey advises callers on a wide variety of financial issues, including work, home buying, debt, lending, and of course, saving for retirement. He's known to sometimes get aggressive about people or things he sees as financially irresponsible, as shown by the collection of videos on YouTube titled Top 10 Epic Dave Ramsey Rants. However, for many viewers, that's part of the fun or the entertainment value. Yet another figure on this tier of thought leaders is Susie Orman, who has written nine New York Times bestsellers about personal finance and currently hosts the Susie Orman Women and Money podcast. Orman has won two Emmy Awards as a guest on The Oprah Winfrey Show 29 times and has made Time Magazine's list of the 100 most influential people. The fact is some of these third tier financial thought leaders may occasionally have advice that actually makes sense for you, sure. But on the other hand, it may be advice that makes more sense for an investor 10 years younger, someone still in the growth and accumulation stages of retirement planning. In that case, it might actually be dangerous advice for someone in or nearing retirement. The answer all depends on your individual situation and on analyzing your retirement income needs with the right financial advisor. Investing for income? The idea has grown in popularity over the last several years due to today's volatile stock market. But if you're at or near retirement age, it's no longer just how much you've saved, it's about maximizing and protecting your life savings while minimizing your risk from market ups and downs. David J. Scranton's new book, The Retirement Income Story, is here to help baby boomers face the challenges of investing in this age of economic uncertainty. Visit theretirementincomestory.com to learn more. Now let's welcome our next guest, Matthew Johnson, owner and president of Johnson Wealth and Income Management, a retirement income store located in Humboldt, Iowa, and also a very good friend of the income generation, and especially, perhaps more importantly, uh, a very close friend of yours truly. Matthew, thanks so much for being here on the show. Thanks so much for having me, Dave. So, okay, financial thought leaders, whom do you admire as a financial thought leader? Talk to us about this. Well, with regards to thought leader, I would say I have three icons in my world that have really impacted me. They're they're pretty old though. Andrew Carnegie um, is a thought leader to me. Uh, just his his passion to be able to grow his legacy and to be able to create jobs. Um, he was a Scottish immigrant and he saw opportunities and he took those opportunities. Uh, John D. Rockefeller. Uh, it's interesting, John D. Rockefeller, uh, obviously he's most known as being one of the wealthiest men in the world. At one time, he had a net worth of over 65, in today's dollars, $65 billion. He had so much wealth that it was one representative of 1.9% of the total economy. 
was huge. Um, and I would say number three would have to be uh, Henry Ford. What a visionary. He took something that he saw that was good and he made it even better. So for you, a, a thought leader is somebody that gives you encouragement um, with innovation, but somebody who really tries to make the world better. Uh, it seems to be an overriding theme that's important to you when you put the label thought leader on that person's forehead. Absolutely. Yeah. How about more recently? Now, if you can just take a minute and name a couple more, maybe more recent day thought leaders that people might know. Sure. Um, he's now passed, so I don't know that he's recent, but he's just recently passed, and that would be John Bogle, you know, the founder of Vanguard. And John Bogle took something as important as investing, and he thought that there had to be a better, simpler, more cost-effective way of investing. And he created the index fund which has changed the world of investing for so many different individuals. Another one that, that I really respect and look up to that I've personally learned so much from would be Robert Kiyosaki. Um, what a wonderful educator, a man that really teaches people that money is a tool. And not only is it a tool, but it's something that can be a blessing to, to yourself, to your family, but only if it's used in the right way. And he teaches us that we we use money in an incorrect way in this country. He wants money. For him, for him, the big secret is really using it to generate income, to generate cash flow. Correct. So we need exactly. to take a quick commercial break. Matthew, just hold on for a second. Stay with us, please. And you stay with us, too. We have more to come right here on The Income Generation. The road to retirement is filled with twists and turns, and life's unexpected detours could easily throw you off course. That's why it's essential to work with a financial advisor who is also a fiduciary, a fiduciary experienced in helping clients navigate the complexities of retirement planning while helping you pay yourself first. The road to retirement now made simple. To learn more, visit the retirementincomestore.com. your grandchildren out for ice cream and try to pay for it using your stock certificates? No, that would be ridiculous. Instead, you would use your income. So why then do so many retirees make one of the biggest financial mistakes, dipping into their savings instead of relying on income during retirement? The good news? It's completely avoidable. To learn more, visit the retirementincomestore.com. When I began writing books and hosting my own radio show several years ago, I knew I never wanted to let my own growing career as an industry thought leader interfere with what I love most, which is working with clients. I also knew from networking with advisors across the country that others were also industry thought leaders, in addition to being boots on the ground advisors who are still committed to helping their own clients as well as welcoming new clients. Balancing the two can be a challenge. But meeting that challenge was the major motivation behind the launch of my registered investment advisory firm, Sound Income Strategies, and my retirement income store franchise. Just like me, most advisors aligned with the retirement income store aren't just advisors. They're also best-selling authors, radio hosts, speakers, and thought leaders within the industry. Through a variety of turnkey programs, the retirement income store franchise helps these advisors pursue their busy careers as thought leaders while still providing their own clients with the highest possible level of service. At the same time, all advisors aligned with the Retirement Income Store have access to the cutting edge, actively managed financial tools available through Sound Income Strategies. In today's crazy, uncertain environment, 
Active management can be the key to ensuring your advisor can maximize your income return regardless of market conditions. The point is that your favorite financial thought leader and the advisor who helps you with your individual financial plan don't always have to be two different things. Many advisors who specialize in income-based financial strategies are also industry thought leaders who share their insights regularly on the national stage. What makes them different is that their insights are based not just on market research, but on their interactions with everyday investors just like you. They know firsthand the needs and concerns of Americans in and nearing retirement because they hear from them on a daily basis. They work to help them meet those needs in the best way possible based on each client's individual goals and situations. And today, I'm proud to say, many are able to do it more effectively and efficiently than thanks to Sound Income Strategies and the Retirement Income Store. Now it's time to welcome back Matthew Johnson, good friend of the income generation, owner president of Johnson Wealth and Income Management, a retirement income store right in Humboldt, Iowa. Thanks for sticking around. You bet. So, okay, uh, the people you mentioned from yesteryear, uh, those are all people that uh, we call second tier. Uh, and they weren't really financial thought leaders, but they were business thought leaders. Carnegie, Rockefeller, Henry Ford. On the more recent ones, you've, you've named people who are specifically financial thought leaders between uh, Kiyosaki and John Bogle. John Bogle, of course, shined a light on fees and making excessive trades and how making excessive trades, sometimes like the guy who's, uh, you know, you see him passing you out on the highway and he's changing lanes back and forth trying to get ahead. You get to the toll booth and he's behind you, right? That was John Bogle's theory. And of course, Robert Kiyosaki who talks a lot about uh, income, investing for income, for cash flow. Uh, instead of being self-employed, being a business owner. So tell us more about specifically what you've taken away from those two more recent day thought leaders. Well, first and foremost, we have to understand that in order to make the greatest amount of gain with your money, you want to be very conscientious of cost, right? So there's always all these middlemen and there's always a cost for having middlemen. And John Bogle knew that that investors were number one complicating their life they were investing all of this hard-earned money that they would worked all their life for and unfortunately a lot of the gains that they could have been making was being eaten up by all the cost and the fees and the commissions and all the other things and so he was a very cost conscious very frugal type of investor and so instead of trying to overpay and underperform he thought, well, what if we just go ahead and we try to create something that's low cost, that doesn't need to uh, really make the wallets of the middlemen fat, and let's follow an index. And it's very, very effectively. And, and right now, it's come, it, it, a light was shine upon it through the Obama administration at the end of President Obama's presidency, where they tried to shine a light on fees and 401ks and, and everything else. Uh, we've got 30 seconds left before a commercial break. Tell us about Robert Kiyosaki and why he's an important thought leader to you. Robert is a wonderful man. He's learned a lot of lessons. He's, he's a wealthy man, but he's gone broke and he's learned a lot of lessons through all of those things. And he's taught us that our money needs to be constantly making us money. It needs to be working for us instead of us working for the money. And so what he does is he teaches people or he helps re-educate the mind that money is something of a tool to be used, to be invested, to create more income. Because if you have income, then you can live life without cannibalizing your principal. He also teaches- and He's also passionate uh, with teaching children uh, the right rules of finance at an early age, and, and that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, we can take another one of those pesky commercial breaks. Stay with us for a moment, please. You stay with us too. We'll be right back here with more coming up on the income generation in just a moment. And let's welcome back one last time our good friend Matthew Johnson from Humboldt, Iowa. Now, Matthew, you and I had the pleasure of attending together a six-day Tony Robbins event. Of course, Tony Robbins is a thought leader, a uh, well-known thought leader in the areas of business and personal development. Um, what did you get from him in the category of, of 
thought leading that you were able to put to use that you think our viewers might be able to benefit from? So, so this is a four hour program, right? Okay. Uh, no, just just <laughs> kidding. To, you have to cram, um, that's right. You have to cram six hours or six days into uh, basically two minutes. Okay, we'll try. So one of the biggest takeaways for me, and I know that every person experiences a little something different, but you know, we have all these different issues in our life and we have these things called symptoms, right? We don't understand why we do what we do. We don't understand why we have the things in our life that we do. And one of the things that he really does is he doesn't deal with the symptom. That's what therapists and psychologists and, and all the other things do. He actually drills deeper and he asks you to really examine what your primary question is. And you see, all of us have a story, every single one of us. We have a story about our money. We have a story about investing. We have a story about living life and what marriage is and what relationships are to be. And when we really examine our story and we really examine why we have said to ourselves what we've said, now we're better able to understand why we do what we do and why we react the way that we do. And so he goes way deeper than those superficial things that are in your life to help you examine and understand why you have those things. Yes, you see, Tony Robbins says, change your story, change your life, right? That's right. So in the minute or so we have left, what are some of the stories, if you will, that you hear people come into your office every single day um, that you think hold them back uh, from being financially successful. There are personal stories that need to be changed. Give us a couple sure. examples. Absolutely. So when it comes to finance and personal investing, one of the stories that I've had to deal with for the last 22, 23 years of my life is that the only place you can make money is in the stock market. Uh, that the stock market is a good inflation hedge. Um, that you have to have at least $100,000 in the bank or that you're going to have to work the rest of your life before you can uh, feel comfortable that you're never going to run out of money. And if we really understand the stories, what I've come to find is that many of the stories that we live with every day are stories that we were told as children or that we adopted uh, of others in our life. And so once a person comes in and we discover their story, then I can help them rewrite that story by understanding that the stock market is not the only place you can make money. You can retire at the age you want to, and you can do the things you want to do. You just have to rewrite how you think about money and investing. And that's a great example of change your story, change your life. Uh, exactly. People, yeah. Listen, we need to leave it there for now, Matthew. I wish we had more time. I really do. We're on a great topic here. Thanks so much for being part of the show as usual. Thanks for having me. And you stay with us also. We got more coming up here in just a moment, right here on The Income Generation. I'd like to thank both of our guests for joining us for another episode of The Income Generation. I'd also like to thank you, our new and returning viewers. You know, as we've discussed, today's topic is natural for our show. That's because one of our main objectives here on The Income Generation is to bring you insights from some of the financial world's thought leaders. Their ideas and opinions about the economy and financial markets can vary widely, but their knowledge is unquestionable. Hearing from them could go a long way toward helping you become a more informed and knowledgeable investor. Just keep in mind some of the key points that we covered today. Financial thought leaders exist at different tiers of influence. Those in the top tier not only analyze the markets, they also help shape and set policies that influence the markets in major ways, both good and bad. Their opinions and decisions can be guided as much by political influence as by economic fundamentals. Thought leaders on the second or middle tier of influence are economists, academics, authors, and entrepreneurs who analyze the markets broadly and more independently. Their insights can be invaluable for everyday investors, but aren't a viable alternative to working with the right qualified financial advisor to create your individual retirement plan. And the same holds true for thought leaders on the third tier of influence, even though many of them specialize in giving very specific investment advice, but to a broad audience. Naturally, we mean popular and entertaining market watchers like Jim Cramer, Dave Ramsey, and others. And finally, there are the third tier thought leaders in my own group, authors, TV, and radio show hosts, frequently frequent guests in National Spotlight, 
who also happen to be practicing financial advisors that work directly with clients in or nearing retirement on a daily basis. Here's the bottom line. Yes, it's smart and important to stay informed and to hear from as many knowledgeable financial thought leaders as possible. However, at the end of the day, creating your own retirement plan and navigating the challenges and opportunities of the financial markets is a job for you in partnership with the right financial advisor, who, yes, might also be a thought leader. Thanks for watching. If you're close to retirement and you really want to know how to protect and maximize your money, it's essential you stay informed and up to date. And as you know, right here is where you can do it on the income generation. I'm David Scranton, and we'll see you next week. For behind the scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow the Income Generation Show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes.